Hey everyone, welcome to another exciting episode of the Scratch Track Podcast presented by the Dude and Grim Show and co-produced by Mr. I-V-E-S-T. I'm the Dude. And I am Grim. And we're going to talk today about a couple songs that came out. Um, it would have almost seemed as if one was sort of a counter to the other, but maybe it was more of a conversation. But these two songs, which you have probably heard of by now, are Rich Men of North Richmond by Oliver Anthony. Uh, which is yes. a stage name, and mm -hmm. then "Rich Men Earning North of, a million, North of a million" by the legendary Billy Bragg. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, very interesting. Um, I'm not sure how far apart these songs um, kind of were were from when Oliver Anthony's came out to Billy Bragg's, but I, I think it was pretty close. Yeah, sometime, I mean, right? it doesn't sound like Billy Bragg, you know, took like months of just labor intensive writing, toiling over this. It was it's basically no. some of the most literal lyrics yes. you could ever write and in very much stylistically in the same way as Oliver Anthony's now per producer of the show, Mr. Ivy EST, brought these to our attention. Mm -hmm. And I have to say immediately, I made a mistake and assumed that Oliver Anthony's song, Rich Men of North mm -hmm. Richmond, was was more or less like a right wing militant anthem. Um and that's that was just my assumption based on you know, um, this sort of idea I think that people have where um, so, like like it's it's hard to find work and it's it's hard being a lower middle class white person, which I'm kind of like, yeah, I, I, I don't think you really know what what it is like <laughs> being hard. If you're really a marginalized person, then it gets yeah. really fucking hard. Right. <laughs> so yes. but but that was. um but I will initially that's kind of what you thought the angle it was kind yes, of taking I without think, without listening about, to when you heard it. About so I was yeah. I I'd very much judging a book by its cover, not giving it a fair shake. Now, I'd like to hear your first initial impressions and then I'll tell you about what I thought after actually giving it a fair listen <clears> and watching some additional videos with Oliver Anthony the person. Yeah. Well, first of all, I I'd never listened to him before, heard of him anything like that. Um, you know, it was kind of presented to me in the same way it was presented to you. And uh, it is a very literal song. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, again, I, I think I agree with a lot of his points. I think it's a very good sort of social commentary where maybe the working class, a lot of blue collar workers, how, how people really feel. A lot of people, I mean, not even necessarily working class and blue collar. I, I think if you ask the majority of people out there, they do feel like they're underpaid and overtaxed. I mean, and you know, yeah, they, yeah, absolutely. And, and, and absolutely. overworked. I mean, I mean, I, I, there's very few people out there who are like, you know what? God, man, I just got, I got paid too much going. last year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, got, yeah. I need to give some of this back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Do you, you, are there any charities I can, you know, not, not to say people are charitable and they don't yeah, give to organizations, you know. but, but I, I feel like the majority of people do, do feel that way. Um, and I, I think also there's there's a lot of jobs, careers in, in our country that are extremely for the importance of that job. Teachers, uh, you know, occupations very, such oh, as that that are underpaid. so under underpaid um, and those things kind of fight against each other because it's like, well, maybe if those maybe we'd have some better teachers in our country if that, you know, occupation actually paid better. Right. Yeah. And so it's there's there's sort of this back and forth. And that give creates and take. a whole nother cycle, because the better the education system is, the the more quality. Yeah. I, I mean, that that is, is very much like a, a cyclical thing. And I agree. Yeah. But but I think this song really touches on a lot of those uh, a lot of those elements and, and a lot of those feelings. It, it, I was and we'll talk about this a little later. God, I was just it, it was actually nice to hear a song where somebody was singing about something. 
that yeah, was actually that, like that mattered re- and not just like re- re- relatable not like hey check out my fucking awesome new watch tonight's or, gonna be a real you know, good night yeah like tonight's gonna be a real good night like let's bullshit you know yeah. this is what we're doing at the club this is who yeah. i'm hanging out with i'm you know it's not it's not this influencer lifestyle that that you know the one percent of the people in this country like Correct. so i think I, th- I think it is a song that a lot of people can identify with and and relate to and sort of commiserate over yeah. in in a, in, in now, a sense one One thing that I really respect about his approach to it is that he has been very much stating that it is it it shouldn't be confused with politics. It's not a political song. It doesn't lean one way or another. It just is out there on its own. Um, And I think that's that's the part where I really gained a, a different amount of respect for it, because I think that. We're so used to everything having this automatic slant one way or another. One way or another. Yeah. You're just, that's what you're used to because that is the bullshit that, that you're fed through the media. Right. Sure. And, and you will gravitate toward the things that support your view, like the confirmation bias. Right. Mm-hmm. So, but he's been very, very forthright about that. This is not a political song. And I guess I he had a reaction after a while where they there was uh, an early debate for the Republican Party um, yeah. for the the presidential sure. upcoming election. Thing. So they Scam. played this song in the debate, and his reaction was, "He's like, it's it's kind of funny that they played the song because those are the people that the song is about." And I was yeah. like, "Dude, that is a great." perfect answer you could not have said it any better that isn't well i mean i guess i'm wondering is that in a sense though is that hypocritical if he's saying it's not about politics or or you know well things along those lines i, I or, see i see you your know. point but i think his point is not that they were republicans that they were rich politicians who you know just start naming off the bull like insider trading. I, I mean, it's it's like they can't help but be rich. Their pockets are yeah. lined by special interests, who, by the way, actually runs this country, not the fucking people. Um, so I just I thought it, I thought that was a really good answer because to me it just affirmed more that that he wasn't taking a political stance and saying, I'm right and you're wrong. It was more or less That's good. This is where we find ourselves at this moment in time. And this is how yeah. a lot of people feel about it. Yeah. Well, it, and I think that's an important thing. I think it's, if, if it, if it is to take sort of a, you know, if, if people in political parties are going to sort of attach themselves to this, it shouldn't be like, oh, you know, oh, they played this as a Republican, you know, d- debate. So that means it's a Republican song. So, so yeah, now yeah. Democrats, like, like both, it, it's okay for both people to identify both sides, both groups. Like that's, it, it doesn't have to be this, like we were saying earlier, one or, or the other. I yeah, feel like not mutually it, exclusive, it, but somehow it, this is how we've become because everything is mm-hmm. so polarized nowadays. If, if you believe one thing, have, I got to believe the other. Yeah. <laughs> and you can't have an intelligent conversation that finds some, commonality in the middle which is is really sure. too bad and yeah. and like it you know it probably makes the magic eight ball say outlook not so good on yeah. a societal perspective but mm. well one thing that you just said is you just and i think we talked about earlier a little bit but you used the word conversation and and so i think that to me leads into sort of the billy bragg song that was sort of seen and again this is the way i think i i read it and and whatnot was yeah almost like he was like ripping it apart or tearing the song down the the, the way i really looked at it is um it, it is sort of a it's a response i think it's a conversation it is um you have these two people like if you and i are having a debate or just a conversation and you're telling me oh man this sucks and this sucks and i hate this and I hate this you know I think one of the things is, is it's very easy to, to point out, to complain, what, what, co- complain what's wrong. And look, there's something very, we've all done it. There's something oh. very therape- therapeutic about it. Oh, like, sometimes you, you just know, need to vent, no doubt. Yeah, absolutely. And and that's something that this song could be doing. But I think the way I took Billy Bragg's track was sort of a, hey, okay, I, I hear what you're saying. I don't disagree with what you're saying, but it's not enough. It's not enough just to point, point out, out what problem. you don't like. Yeah. Okay. You know, because, and, and that's where I feel like a lot of people, 
it's easy to complain, but it's it's harder to come up with the solution. It's harder to put a plan yep. in place. It's it's Absolutely. harder to 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 make those changes. And I think obviously the 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 big line, at least in his song, is um, you know basically join a union or yeah. start a union. You know, I mean that's that's sort of his 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 thing. You know, fight for better pay. I I understand that in a sense because some people one there's strength in numbers, uh-huh. and then and then there's also some people they need people to to fight for them they don't know how to do certain things they they don't have the awareness or the education they're like hey i know this is a problem but, but I'm, I'm not sure I, I don't know to, how to go about um you know fixing it so i understand sort of that that mentality yeah um, but what's I, what's your take on that well good i thank you for asking um my take is really the problem's a little more complicated than that And there are some instances where unions work and are probably needed, even even still to this day, because I think you could have made an argument a long time or not even a long time ago that says we have employment laws and all these things in place now, so we don't need unions. Well, I, I think, yeah, that's well and good. But if you're working in some sort of a gigantic industry and he brought up minors in the song, for examples now. Sure. I don't know why in 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 the name of anything good and holy, why you would go into that line of work today. But people still do. And I'm sure they kind of grow up in a place where that's just that's what it is. That's the path you have. And you either do that or you your get dad on disability. did it. Your brothers yeah. did it. Your, it's, 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 yeah. it's, it's in the family or, you know, some people didn't, you know, they don't have degree. They don't have certain, yeah. you know, career paths. And that's, you know. Yeah, but so what you, you got to do to much make, like pay Judge rent. Smale says in Caddyshack, the world needs ditch diggers too. So, with that, <laughs> with that in mind, um, with that in mind, I, I get the whole bit about a union, but unions also have downsides, and I don't think that 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 is the ultimate answer. There's, I, I mean, that that may be a short term answer, but I don't think that that is the answer because he forgot the line about where unions make things so cost prohibitively expensive to produce that they ship it off to China because it's cheaper to make it there and import <laughs> it. They they did not put that line in there, which is interesting. But the one thing I like that, that Billy Bragg uh, did bring up was the idea of why do we not have socialized health care? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, like before, before, you know, you mentioned people who are self-employed and there's their options for that now. Yeah. But I mean, and I'm sure there was there always had to be some sort of an option. But for for many Americans, it's it's kind of bullshit to me that like my family's health care is tied to my job. Why? Why is that? Those two things should exist in different worlds. You know, it, it doesn't make sense. And for some reason, I, I don't know why people are so threatened by this idea, but it seems to really scare a lot of people. Um, and, and it's one of those becomes one of those divisive topics that's hard to talk about because, you know, in Oliver Anthony's song, he was like, why should our taxes pay for the overweight people on disability? And I mean, he straight called it out. Yeah. Yeah. Again, it's very literal. Like there's no like ambiguity or, you know, yeah. like, yeah, he, I mean, he, he pretty much does. Well, I mean, to, look, we could probably go on and on and on about, you know, how amazing, you know, Just stay tuned are. for part and, three and four. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, um, but here's the thing. I think overall, I think both these songs are great. I think it's great that they both say something. I, I think it's great that it provokes conversation. Yes. Like that. That's that's I mean. That's what's important here. And I don't think it's, you know, even having the conversation of, you know, this song versus this song. I don't know if that's necessarily the it's 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 the whole idea what these songs are about. And and look, it's interesting. I think in a lot of ways they're, they're actually agreeing they're actually saying very, I think, similar things and making similar points. Um but it's it it's sort of the conversation, and uh, I, I just think that's that's what's what's really important. Now I'll be curious if um, Oliver Anthony, what if he comes back with another song? Yeah, like like, I know. like if it becomes like a thing. Like I mean, from a business and marketing perspective, why wouldn't you? He, but, he uh, I do have to say, he seems to me as a very likable, down to earth, honest person. Um, yeah, 
in, in the stuff I saw with them. And I did see other reaction videos where people who were demographically speaking very much on the other side of what Oliver Anthony is, heard him out and heard him out as not a not a politically themed thing just heard it for what it is and like you like you said earlier you just everyone can relate to that feeling sure absolutely so i think this is the point where we can wrap this episode up but anybody who's watching this which you know hopefully there's a lot of you um i'd love to know what you guys think where do you stand on this you know definitely i mean i'm sure there's plenty of uh thoughts from a political perspective but which just, we're not really interested in <laughs> yeah right so yeah, are but, you gonna take your take your take this job and shove a hat and put it on or or are you gonna make america great again what yeah. are you gonna do like what are you gonna do so, um all right i think that yeah start a union. <laughs> are, are, are you gonna start a union now did it inspire you to join a union start a union i think i just want to start a club <laughs> yeah Definitely a club, a music club. All right. I think that pretty much wraps it up here, Grim. Time to go. Time to go. The Dude Grim Show. Scratch Your Track is produced by The Dude Grim. Additional music provided by Moore and the Tings. Copyright 2023. The Dude Grim Show.